very large underground, safe dwelling for special folk who could fly in within two and a half hours, go into an underground transport at the airport, and be, shall we say, secure? I don't know. You got a mile and a half of water running over you. You got mountain ranges displaced. Who knows? I don't. I don't have the answers. Even if it's localized. Uh, 400 yard tsunamis running over a you know 100 square miles. It doesn't matter. It's not going to be that simple. But the the dist- isn't it 90 percent of the world's populous cliff yeah, lives, lives on the coast the or, or very and, close to the ocean? Yeah, within 30 miles, yeah. you get 85 percent of the planet's populous. But even beyond that, of course, you get almost all the nuclear plants. You get um, all of the port systems. You sure. get all of the communication sure. sites, and just on and on and on. So. It doesn't have to be a mile and a half tsunami. No, no. and the some of the literature, some of the ancient literature that has come through, suggests that it, it, this movement is done in a series of fits and starts, little jerks, and this makes sense relative to what's actually going on and how the angular momentum of the planet would attempt to reassert itself under these conditions, and that the bulge being gone would not be a smooth, continuous process. And so, even if you were going to shift a great degree, say that the continents were going to spin. 3,000 kilometers, as Patrick suggests. Well, even under those conditions, it might do it in three separate jumps, in which case that perhaps it would be, as you say, locally devastating, which may be, you know, maybe it's going to come in, uh, you know, 100 miles, 200 miles along the coast, and we're going to have huge levels of destruction at that level. Effectively, our civilization is shot because of the... And that would take care of it, sure. Yeah, and, and really... Uh, the terrible part of this is that much of the civilization may be really in, at risk for, from the precursors long before we actually get to such an event, because bear in mind certain things are predictable. As I was saying, the internal magnetics of the planet are going to get really weird, and so we're going to see, uh, as, an, as a noticeable or predictable um, uh, precursor to this, we would see the poles melt while the temperate zones become colder and have a lot of freezing, so it'd be kind of like you know, a hair on a, on a naturally occurring bald guy like myself. So there's a little mm-hmm. ring of hair around the ears. We're going to have snow around the temperate zone. It mm-hmm. may get quite severe at the mm-hmm. same time that the, the Arctic Circle area may just uh, be totally ice-free. This will have to do with those. Which has happened before we know. Yeah. Correct. And, uh, and actually, I think uh, Charles Hapgood cites it in both in um, uh, Path of the Poles and the... Um, right, uh, I think he does. The map yeah. of the ancient sea king. Well, there's trees, everything else down there. I mean, it was obviously green and lush and and quite yes. vibrant as a, a non ice mass at one time. Uh, when and how? I want to again call attention to the special material for tonight's program uh, available through the guest box at at my site rents dot com or halfpasthuman dot com. Beautifully done. I don't know who did it. Uh, uh, Rebecca Price did all of the graphics. Well, for Rebecca, that's why we had to wait. Was basically yeah. we couldn't <laughs> couldn't uh, get my uh, crude graphics to get any anything close to the idea, so we had to get a professional involved. Rebecca, you did a beautiful, brilliant job. Uh, it is she just, translated all these very well. I'm very pleased. Yeah, yeah it's extraordinary, and we will uh, keep that up in a featured story along with tonight's audio for uh, for free for a long time. Uh, this is. I'm looking at some of these drawings again and again and just amazed. She is really gifted. That's good. Very good stuff. Okay, so we have uh, a thousand days, maybe less. Who knows? Um, The problem is that this is a predictable sequence if you have certain levels of knowledge ahead of time, which has been deprived from us. The powers that be may know it uh, through the Vatican at all, but us as the regular humans, we don't. Well, that's why I'm looking at Denver as a, a locus, and there's a yeah. lot of weirdness there, and, and uh, anybody can be there in two and a half hours, and that's all. Yeah, you know, and it's uh, one of these genetic kind of things. I'm not a, I've done spelunking. I have no problem with it. I can handle claustrophobia and that kind of stuff, but um, I'm a small boat kind of guy, so that's what I, my approach is going to be. Now, that's a thought. Okay, so somebody's got a boat. It's a stable boat. It's not a, you know, some sleek sailing yacht. What's the plan? What would the plan be to cast off? You got you've got notice. You've got ten hours. You've got a couple of days. You no, you may have really... months. You may actually have months. What okay. if we're what if we're correct and the ice gives way, say about six months on the pole, six months before the event occurs? Okay. Well, then we're going to get a huge level of uh, water raised, maybe as much as fifty or sixty feet. Even though ultimately it might be three hundred feet, it takes a long time to propagate around the planet. But you'd get that initial fifty or sixty foot tidal range shift, and so you'd know 
and that might occur <laughs> six months beforehand. And all right. you'd have satellites going wonky, the, everything's well, they'd be toast. on the planet. Yeah, I think they'd all be toast. Yeah. So you, you take off in your boat, you go out, what, a thousand miles, five hundred miles, and then you there's, end up you end up stuck in Iowa City, Iowa when the water's <laughs> see. Well maybe you when you see the Rockies, you know, follow a Bugs Bunny's advice and and hang a left. <laughs> I, I would say. All right, hang on gang, we'll be right back. of things here. Noah's Ark. Hmm. Well, it goes even into the Vedic literature. That's uh, You find the water myths everywhere, and if you look at the, a lot of the Sanskrit stuff, which in, in my opinion is, has to be one of the oldest languages around just based on complexity. Yeah. yeah. The Vedic myths, um, the pre-Vedic myths actually talk about this fellow by the name of Manu, who saved the woman who knew the name and uses of all of the plants. It was from their education that uh, the civilization was able to restart. Mm-hmm. And I like their particular myth because Manu is a small small boat guy, no giant ark or anything, just him and this woman and their food and so on. And he was told about it by um, uh, interaction with sea life. And basically he was a, a, a fisherman who knew the sea intimately, and because uh, he knew it intimately, he knew things weren't quite right, and he started getting ready. And when all this happened, they were out in the boat. And uh, there's some other information within that myth structure and some of the writing that goes very specifically and could be almost a log entry in terms of mm-hmm. how this thing hmm. could play out. All right. So if you're out at sea, you don't there's necessarily get... There's very different get, strategies, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't necessarily get thrown on the land. You just kind of rise up and you rise back down or you settle back down. Yeah, there's other issues. There's going to be huge amounts of debris, um, you know, because all of our civilization is going to be crumbled yeah, up and washed yeah, away. There's going to be volcanoes yeah, blowing yeah. up under your butt, that kind of thing. Not, not You know, good. it's going to be right, like well, something out of um, a horror movie in many regards. It's a real a real dice roll, folks. Exactly. Now, the Vatican built the world's largest infrared observatory out somewhere in the desert of Arizona. You remember that town yeah. 10, 15 years ago? People were asking, why they build infrared? What are they looking at? And it, we hear, hear stories that they're looking at the sun. Looking at the sun. Not just not just a Soho thing. They're looking at the sun. Looking for heat signatures. Looking for changes. Maybe they're studying the windings you've been talking about. I don't Correct. know. Correct. And actually, if you know how to look at it, and here's something else. How did the Mayans know, and the Egyptians, and these other people know about the polar spin? But they also know about these three other, what are known as heartbeats within the sun in the Vedic tradition: the 22-day, a 25-day, and a 30, and the an internal 36, 37-day cycle. Hmm. And uh, indeed, some of these things may show up as distortions within the infrared band. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's kind of looking at that in order to be able to see the levels of uh, stress hmm. within the magnetic field as a side effect of it. All right. So th- I guess the film 2012 is coming out. Soon, maybe it's out already. I don't know. Uh, another Hollywood disaster pick. Who, of course, you know, when they made it, they went and consulted Patrick Garrell. Because, that's that's what I was getting at. Now, yeah. Another disaster flick, but they did talk to somebody whose website is obviously going to become very popular very soon. Yeah. We hope this program and your work, uh, which I'm sure you will continue adding to, does as well. We'll update it as as uh, as needed. This is going to be. Boy, talk about an, uh, a society that's drowning in anxiety already. Yeah. The uh, 2012 drum beat is, you can hear it already. I mean, people have already put out how many books? Over 150 books already. Uh, just nominal books. But there are going to be lots of things. The potential to manipulate people 
has never been greater, greater or yeah. more easy, easily achieved with the media. Uh, and I don't, I don't even begin to know how to tell people what to do. We talked, you know, should we say anything about this? The, you, the, the feds would never tell us. No, but I'm, and I'm quite convinced that if you read uh, both Cottrell and uh, more, uh, Morris, the Cottrell's uh, book, and then uh, especially the Mayan Prophecies, and then uh, you read Gerald's book, you become aware of the mathematics. The mathematics is very straightforward once you grasp the uh, way it now works. Now, when you say that, excuse me, but when you say mathematics don't lie, okay, we know that. It's, it's, it's the voice of the universe. We know right. that, too. How easy is it? To understand the math. Now you're a brilliant man. I mean, it's no, it's, you 